Thank God it's Friday. Traditionally a great time to publish bad news. Today the BBC offered up 3,000 pages of emails and interview transcripts harvested during the inquiry into the Jimmy Savile fiasco. Lord Patton, the BBC Trust chairman, admitted it, quote, paints a very unhappy picture, and that without the 3% of the material that had been redacted, or to you and me, crossed out with a big black pen. Here's Siobhan Kennedy. They'd love to put this man and that crisis behind them, but today it all came flooding back. 3,000 pages of testimony given by senior BBC staff as to why Newsnight dropped an investigation into sexual abuse allegations by one of the corporation's star entertainers, Jimmy Savile. The BBC said its decision today to publish thousands of documents into the inquiry was all about being open and transparent, yet key portions of several interviews were blacked out and the corporation's acting director-general, Tim Davey, would only give one interview today in this building here behind me to a BBC journalist. The most important character at Westminster right now isn't the Prime Minister or the Leader of the Opposition or even the Speaker. No, it's this chap, Mr Black Rectangle. Because of Newsnight itself was quick to jump on the use of black ink when MPs tried to hide details of their expenses. Look what happens when I try to show you a sensitive and embarrassing expenses claim. Jeremy Paxman, Newsnight's presenter, was the most heavily censored. He did reveal it was common gossip Jimmy Savile liked young girls and said he'd push for the programme to air its Savile investigation, but was told by the editor, I'm sorry, I just can't do this. Mr Paxman said... Can't was a very, very unusual word to use. And I didn't say, what do you mean, can't? Someone has told you that you can't, or you physically can't face it. Lord Patton, the BBC Trust chairman, revealed a chaotic picture at the heart of BBC senior management, saying there was an impression of... Frantic faffing about. ..around the former Director-General, George Entwistle, who was later forced to resign. He criticised the BBC for having... More senior leaders than China. Yet things still got... Horribly screwed up. And Helen Bowden, the now former director of news, didn't exactly shower herself in glory either, admitting she'd got the wrong end of the stick about the Newsnight investigation and assumed it was... One of those slightly tabloid-esque stories involving groupies. We were promised by the BBC openness and transparency. That's what concerns the victims most. Don't forget uh, that the whole Savile affair happened because people didn't speak out. And so the fact that some of the crucial evidence has been redacted is very, very concerning to them. But what of the BBC boss and his interview with one of his own reporters? Well, he insisted there was nothing to be concerned about. People, when they read it, will not look at, say, management of the BBC have been deliberately trying to stop embarrassment. Frankly, that doesn't stack up. We've done it purely on the basis of legal advice. And as I say, we've only redacted less than 3% of thousands of pages. There's more than enough there to tell the full story. The full story of management infighting and editorial chaos, where no bosses were fired, most just shuffled around. And the story of a BBC star who became one of Britain's most prolific sex offenders. Well, we did ask for an interview with BBC management or the BBC Trust, but no one was available.